But I don't want anyone to get disillusioned and think comedy is always like this, where I would come out and people are like, yeah, this is fun. You know, it's not always like that. There's years, many years, where you're performing and in your head, it's going so bad, you're just like, man, maybe I can still get a real job. <laughs> I mean, that's still an option. I used to perform at colleges, you guys, in 2015. That was my first year of getting to be a full-time comedian, where I got to quit my day job and just do this, which is really, it took nine years to get to that point, so it took a long ass time. And I got to book all these colleges, and colleges pay well, right? Because they're selling those kids kind of an education. <laughs> but also some entertainment, and that's where I come in. So I got booked to all these colleges, and some of the shows were good, and some of them were horrible. Most were pretty rough. But I remember one time I did a show in Pittsburgh at Washington Jefferson University, right outside of Pittsburgh. And I showed up in the small room, there was 10 kids there for the show. And I'm like, that's enough to have a show. The 10 is enough. But the girl that was running it was like, hey, can we wait a few more minutes? because I think some more people are showing up. And I was like, sure. And we waited 10 minutes, and nobody else showed up, but those first 10 people left. <laughs> so, the girl that was running the show, she was very sweet. She goes, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I, and I'm like, it's okay. And she's just like, here you go, here's your check. I guess we're not doing a show. And I went, never apologize for this. <laughs> this is amazing. You just <laughs> handed me a check, and I didn't have to perform for 10, 18 year olds. This is amazing. <laughs> so I went back to the Marriott and got drunk. It was great. <laughs> and so the next night, I'm at, uh, I'm at Penn State Harrisburg, and I walk into a similar situation. I walk in, it's like a big cafeteria type thing, like cafe, and there's a stage area about this size, and there's no one sitting there. And about like 50 yards away, there's like three students studying. They don't know about the show, they're in a different part of the building. They're so far away. And I walk in and I'm like, here we go. Hand me that check, I'm ready to order a drink at the Marriott. And then the girl comes up to me at that show and goes, well, we paid you. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And she goes, well, go up there. And I'm like, there's nobody there. And she's like, all right. Uh, but, so I had to walk on stage in front of nobody <laughs> and start doing this. I don't know if you know this, but you're an integral part <laughs> of this. Like honestly, for a second, take yourselves out of this room and leave me in it. I look like a lunatic. <laughs> this, you guys are very important in this, but there's no one here. And I walk on stage, I'm like, oh my god. So I just start yelling to the three students studying, trying to chase their dreams. And I'm like, please stop chasing your goals and your wants and your needs in life, and please come up and listen to me do stand-up. And they kind of didn't want to, but I just kept yelling at them until they couldn't study any longer. And they did, and I got three students in front, and I'm starting to do the show. It's still just as horrible as you would imagine. There's three kids instead of none, so at least there's eyeballs to stare at me and judge harshly. And I'm doing my act, and about 15 minutes into my 60-minute set, one of the students gets up to leave. And as they're pushing the double doors open to leave, I go, what was it? Was it the cat jokes? <laughs> just trying to say anything, right? And he just looks at me, and he just goes, I just can't. And he pushes the doors open and walks out. Like, that kid left with a piece of my soul. Do you understand? Like, I still dream about him sometimes. And he did that 15 minutes in. I had 45 more minutes to do after that. And I just watched him leave with a piece of my soul. And I went back to the other kids, and I'm like, <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> And I wish I could lie to you guys and tell you it's the worst show that I've ever done, and it's not. It's not. It's just, it just isn't, man. The worst show that I ever did was in my hometown in San Diego, California. I got hired to do a comedy club downtown. It was a private event. It was for a lady's 50th birthday party. And the way she was celebrating was she rented out the entire comedy club for her and her nine friends. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they sat in a row in a line, like a firing squad. <laughs> and the comics just had to come up and just dance for her, pretty much. It just, it was the closest I ever felt to being a court jester. Just like, <laughs> just wait waiting for them to go yay or nay. Just waiting, like, am I gonna be killed? What's happening? So I show up to the club, I see the situation, I'm like, well, this looks like the worst. And they come up to me and they go, listen, you're going on last. 
You only have to do 10 minutes, and you'll know your time is up when you see the birthday cake coming up the side, and that's when you're just gonna start singing happy birthday, and that's how the show's gonna end. I'm like, that sounds absolutely horrible. <laughs> but I guess that's what we're doing, right? So I'm on stage, I'm doing the best that I can with nine people in an empty cavernous comedy club, and it's going horribly. I'm bombing, of course I am. There's no other situation. And I feel like 10 minutes is coming up, so I'm trying to wrap up my set. So I asked the birthday girl, I'm like, excuse me, are you single or are you in a relationship? And she was kind of cool before, now she's no longer cool. She's like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. And I was like, whoa, easy, I'm not trying to hit on you or anything, I'm just trying to get into my last joke. Are you single or are you in a relationship? She's like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. And then a huddle breaks out between her and her friends, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then after like a 10 second, 15 second huddle, she pops up out of the huddle, like a whack a -mole. She just pops up, looks into my eyes, and just goes, I'm a widow. Yes. And that hit me right in the soul. And as soon as she got the last W out of Widow, here comes the cake. So now I'm just like, I am Happy birthday to you. And that was by a mile the worst show that I've ever done. So I really appreciate you guys just being here, huh? <laughs>